Well, US markets are set to close lower today, though the S&P is flat, breaking a four-day winning streak. Now we're joined by Mark Newton of Grey Wolf Execution. Mark, has anything really fundamentally changed to turn sentiment that we've seen? No, I don't think so. I mean, the market's moved uh, a long way in a very short period of time. So in the last six days, I mean, the S&P has moved about 85 points and the Dow over 600. So it's about 4%. Um, starting to see a few signs of stalling out, though, and it's, it's important to point out that you haven't really seen the kind of participation on this little bounce as you'd like, particularly with regards to the Russell. The Russell 2000 has been quite weak, still below things like its 20-day and 50-day moving average, which a lot of people look at. The Dow, which also has a pretty strong correlation with the S&P, has also not really made the same degree of move to the upside. So it's only been really seen in a handful of stocks that have really made the advance. Uh, now we're coming into a time where there are very few catalysts. We're getting towards the end of the earnings season. Um, we've seen the successful uh, handoff from Bernanke to Yellen. And, so, and we just recently heard that the debt ceiling likely has been... Uh, you know, officially lifted. I think the Senate, we got confirmation from the Senate. So really there's, there's, at this point, people are sort of scratching their heads and wondering what the next catalyst can be to take the market higher, given that we've moved, you know, a, a long way on this bounce. And now we seem to have stalled out. Okay. Now we have had some very positive commentary from Yellen over the past few days. Investors seem to have taken that transition very smoothly. Is that also your interpretation? Uh, very much so, and that was the key, is that Yellen did not want to come in and really say anything that would disrupt the market. Um, you know, people accused her of almost being too hawkish because she didn't come out and outright and say that, you know, we're going to take away the tapering and we're going to go back to QE and a little bit of weak data. But there are a couple things to point out. One is that, you know, the tapering is going to continue to proceed in an orderly manner, you know, unless we see dramatic signs of economic weakness. And so that's one thing. And the second is that, the Fed sees the fact that the labor market has been weak. You know, we have, you know, the people right now that are unemployed, the majority of them now have been unemployed for more than six months. And a lot of them are going from, you know, part-time jobs to full-time jobs. There's still a lot of people out there that need work. But, you know, the, the Fed doesn't see this as a problem. They're not paying attention to the fact the unemployment rate has come down close to their little barrier of 6.5%. They're basically throwing these numerical values out the window of 2% for inflation and 6.5%, saying that we're going to keep rates long low for as long as possible. So the market definitely feels a sense of reassurance that they know that there's an issue with the labor market being weak, but yet we're going to keep rates low. So that's also a positive. The last thing is that emerging market weakness doesn't seem to be uh, anything that's it's problematic for the U.S. economy. So regards to the fact we've seen the devaluation and the uh, Argentine peso and the emerging market contagion, that seems to have been contained. So that doesn't seem to be an issue. Okay, and just finally, when you talk about a lack of catalysts in the market at the moment, it sounds as if um, stocks are likely to, to flatline from here. My thinking is the ideal bullish scenario would be to stall out and you have a minor pullback that gets down to about 1775 to 1785 in the S&P, and then you see a start back higher. And on that push higher, you see broad-based participation, good volume, good breadth. Right now, the pullback that we saw really from early January up until last week was a lot stronger on the downside than really any of the rally we've seen. And so the breadth was far more severe. And so we need to see signs of equal participation from small caps, from mid caps, which really have not done so thus far. So I think the next couple of weeks could be choppy. I think the trend overall is still positive, but, but probably there are some warning signs that make me think that um, you know, between March, April, and September, that there's going to be a bigger pullback to the downside. For right now, it's premature. Okay, thank you, Mark. That was Mark Newton from Grey Wolf Execution, and I'm Jane Sell for The Straight.